Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Lynda.com. Today on Variant, I review the amazing Spider-Man 2 film. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I wish they would still release new episodes for Batman the Animated Series. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Everyone who has been watching the show for a while should know that Spider-Man is one of my favorite superheroes. So needless to say, every time Spider-Man is back on the big screen, I'm there opening night. But did I like it? Did I hate it? Well, we're gonna find out. Oh, and there's probably gonna be spoilers in my review, so there's your warning. <laughs> Now before I get into this review, keep in mind everyone has their own opinion. I have mine, you all have yours, and oftentimes they don't line up. So if you don't agree with my opinion or somebody else's in the comments, that's completely fine. That's what makes the conversation fun, getting to disagree and discuss why each did and didn't like things, and I strongly encourage that actually. But when it turns to personal attacks and cruel comments just because they don't agree, it's no longer fun for anyone. I've said it before on the show, we all like comic books first and foremost because they are fun, and the minute the fun is taken out, out of it, what's the point? I want to keep this a fun community where we all can feel safe to state our own opinions and have discussions without having others ruin it by being douchebags. So help me police the comments down below and let's continue to have interesting conversations about things we love. With that out of the way, there are three movies that are currently my personal standards as far as superhero movies go, which are The Avengers, Captain America the Winter Soldier, and The Dark Knight. I have tons of others that I love, but those are my three favorites. So if you're not hitting that mark of awesomeness, then it's not going to be an amazing movie for me. No pun intended. And The Amazing Spider-Man 2 just didn't hit the mark I would have liked it to hit. I mean, there was some stuff I liked about the movie, but I'm going to talk about the bad first, working my way to the good. I think the biggest thing that turned me off with this movie was the romance, and that's not because I don't like romance. I'm not one of those people who are like, romance sucks, I just want action, violence, and blood. One of the greatest things about Spider-Man is his romantic relationships and how that affects him being Spider-Man. So the fact that the romantic elements with Peter and Gwen was a huge part of this film didn't bother me. I just thought it was very very poorly executed and had a Twilight cheesy vibe and Twilight and Spider-Man should never be in the same sentence like the whole scene where Peter and Gwen are saying there's gonna have to be rules or whatever if we're still gonna be friends it, I just wasn't feeling it it came off really cheesy to me and then the part where Harry Osborn is asking for some of Spider-Man's blood but Spider-Man says no and leaves only to be followed by Harry Osborn screaming you're a fraud Spider-Man while curling up in the fetal position on the couch there was just a lot of little stuff like that that I was like um okay I thought the movie was really slow at times, so the pacing could have been a lot better. As for the villains in this movie, I just thought they were okay, didn't blow my mind or anything. Electro had a Batman Forever Riddler approach they took with him. I mean, the whole no one cares or notices me motivation to become a villain is cool and can work, but I think they milked it way too much. And I'm not a fan of what they did with Rhino. Paul Giamatti was a very bad choice for Rhino, and I love Paul Giamatti. He's one of my favorite actors, but he was such a bad choice for this role. And why did they give him a Transformers looking mech suit? I wish they would have gone with something like his appearance in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics where he's just a guy wearing rhino armor, not a guy inside of a robot. Speaking of things I didn't like, I didn't like how the Green Goblin looked either, but I don't care too much about that one because I get the feeling they're going to make him look more goblin-like in future films, judging by how the movie ended. At least, I hope so. With all that said though, let's get to the good. The VFX looked amazing and the web swing has never looked cooler. The way they would show him flipping in the air mid-swing or when he would dive bomb towards the city with his costume rippling in the wind before shooting his web looked freaking awesome. Awesome. It's everything I would hope it would be coming to life on the big screen. Just his overall use of his webs was downright awesome. Spidey's costume also looks ripped right out of the comic. Definitely the best Spider-Man costume today. I don't even know if they can improve on it. It's pretty much already flawless as far as looks are concerned. I really like how they decided to go with giving Spider-Man huge white eyes this time around. Since my favorite Spider-Man artist is Todd McFarlane who drew Spider-Man with huge eyes. Spider-Man's witty remarks are also pretty cool in this movie. I'm glad we're getting to see that more and more as these movies progress as that's one of my favorite aspects of Spider-Man. I thought the fighting was thoroughly entertaining. They got the acrobatic movements of Spider-Man down perfectly. My favorite part of the movie was the death of Gwen Stacy. I just thought that whole scene was done perfectly. They did a great job translating her death from the comics to the movie. It wasn't 100% accurate to how it happens in the comics, but nonetheless it was done great and actually kind of gut-wrenching, which was impressive since I assumed they were going to kill her and I'm sure many others who've read the comics assumed as well. It was also cool to have Felicia Hardy introduced in this movie. For those of you who don't know, she later becomes Black Cat. They 
also introduced Smythe, who later becomes a Spider-Man villain who is connected to the Spider Slayers, most people remember from the Spider-Man cartoon from the 90s. And then of course Vulture's wings, Doc Ock's tentacles, and Rhino, which all hints to the Sinister Six, which we know we're getting, and they have a movie in development for already. Anyway, bringing my thoughts to a conclusion, there's a bunch of other stuff I did and didn't like, but when I put it all together and look at the movie as a whole, for me at least, the movie was just okay, which stinks, because I wish I enjoyed it more than I did overall, being the big Spider-Man fan that I am. So with all that said, the movie lands out of 5 out of 10 for me. I can see why some people may love it, which is fine and great for the people that do, but for me it was just overall, eh. So, I don't know how to say this without just saying it. I guess I'll just start from the beginning. In 2006, Marvel put out a Spider-Man limited series called Spider-Man Reign, which is based 30 years in Spider-Man's future. It's kind of like The Dark Knight Returns, but for Spider-Man. In this story, Mary Jane dies from cancer. Now you're probably like, what's so weird about that? People die in comic books all the time. Well, the how she gets the cancer is the kicker. It's revealed that she gets cancer because of her prolonged exposure to Peter slash Spider-Man's how can I put this gently, uh, baby potion, which much like his blood is radioactive, which leads to her getting cancer. Yeah. Sometimes I really wonder how some of these ideas make it to print without anyone being like, that's a little weird, guys. Maybe we shouldn't let this story go to print like this, but I guess I should be thanking them because they make for some great WTF segments. Lynda.com is an online learning company with more than 77,000 video tutorials that teach software, creative, and business skills. Memberships start at $25 per month and provides an unlimited 24-7 access to top quality video courses taught by expert instructors with real world experience. Learn anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace from bite-sized tutorials to comprehensive courses in web design, program design, photography, business, audio and video, 3D, and animation. And you can learn on the go with their optimized mobile site or free iPhone and iPad app for members. Try Lynda.com free for seven days by visiting lynda.com forward slash variant. First up for Wednesday, May 7th, we have Detective Comics issue 31. Death comes to Wayne Manor and the number one suspect is Bruce Wayne. Next we have Batman Eternal issue 5. This is already one of my favorite titles thus far and that's simply because the writing and art has been amazing. In this issue, Red Robin takes center stage in a major Gotham City mystery that has Harper and Cullen Rowe caught in the crossfires. Now we have The Wake issue 8. This is one of the best comics I've read in a while. If you love sea monsters, suspense, or just good character development, this is a must buy for you. Here we have Batman Superman issue 10. Following the events of First Contact, witness the last days of Batman and Superman of Earth 2 from a new perspective. And finally we have Future's End issue 1. Issue 0 was given out during Free Comic Book Day and was a fantastic start to this series. If you're a fan of Batman Beyond, the Justice League, time travel, this is a must check out comic. And that brings today's episode to a close, which makes me sad. I'm gonna miss you guys. But until next week, you can like our variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Eris underscore Quinones. But I will see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. We got futures and we got futures and we got futures and oh, yeah, yeah, futures and I think I need to make like a theme song for this comic book series. Boom.